<laughs> so yell at me. Where did the busted eardrum come from? Uh, Sammy, little prick, smack me right in my ear, busted. Yeah. I can't listen to death of this game. That sucks. Yeah. How'd you feel to get that vindication against Magic Master? Um, I don't know if that's what it is. Uh, it's it's weird. Like I. I don't talk about it a lot, but I'm feeling good tonight, so maybe I will. It's weird uh, being in the elite, right, and being me. Um, and my, my teammates are the best bout machine, the greatest tag team of all time, Mr. AEW Cody. Um, and it's hard, man. It's big shoes to, to fill as, as far as partners. Um, and I felt like this year I haven't, <laughs> I have not done it, you know? Um, and I beat Pac tonight, and I'm happy about it. I really am. Uh, but we're one and one, you know. So I haven't really, really beat him, you know, in the way that I need to, I think. Um, so I'd like to have a rubber match, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Between the two of us, um, and I'd like to probably have it as soon as possible. Where are we? Uh, where are we at Wednesday? Nashville. Jonah? Where at? Nashville. Nashville. It's a place. A good place to do some cowboy shit. <laughs> Wednesday. We'll do it Wednesday. I think, huh? I mean, I, I can't. We'll, we'll do it. Uh, so, how, what was going through your head when you and the Bucks came out to try to stop Kenny from, or, or were you trying to ask him if it was time to bring out the barbed wire? I was wondering what was going on in that moment. I didn't know about this damn thing until uh, like halfway through the show. Okay. Uh, like after my match, they, they clued me in on it and they said he wanted us to do it. I don't, I don't know, man. We didn't, uh, we told him no. But I mean, what are you going to do? This dude's out of his mind screaming at you to, to bring this thing out of there for him. You can't just keep saying no forever. You keep screaming. You might as well, dude. He's he's a psycho, and you just have to let him let him get into it a little bit, I guess. So you're clearly walking a lot of emotions today. It's a very special day for AEW and yourself. Um, I think we all can agree that pets are family. How is the burden of and the, the grieving process been? Uh, oh shoot, man. It's uh, it's been tough. You know, it's it's not like a dog where your dog dies, you just get another one. You know, a horse dies. Takes time, I think. Uh, I I bonded with Chuck about it. Uh, he had a horse die on his birthday. He was a kid. I mean, 20 years ago or more. Um, still a dead horse. So we bonded a little bit over it, maybe. Um, I don't know if he would admit to as such, uh, but we'll get through it. You know. It's good, man. Yeah. Uh, shoot. What, what was that on the rankings? Was, was it three, four? I don't know. Three. I think. I think Pack was two. I don't know how that changes tonight. Uh, I, I don't know how that changes Wednesday. Um, so we'll see about that. But it, uh, it's cool, man. You know, to really have a legitimate sense of, you know, where you are. You know I mean, it puts things in perspective. Okay. Okay. Um. Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've got to, it, we're gonna call it cowboy shit. Okay. I think. Yeah. The the stage is gonna be uh, me. It's a big, just big picture of me. And the chaps. It's crotched open to people. And that way. Walk right through. Huh? Walk right through. Walk right through. Walk right through. Yeah. Well, they can ride ponies. I get the horse. Maybe that's when I'll take you. You know, you've been a part of BTE for a long time, been with the Bucks for a long time. They put their faith in you, got you a part of the show, got you in their faction. How do you feel seeing their vision play out, being a part of their vision? And also, how hard is it to keep up with BTE while also doing weekly television now? Um, <laughs> it's cool, man, to see all this come to life. It's great. Um, it's something we've been wanting to do, obviously, for a very long time. Uh, and it's, it's a real thing that I'm you know, flying in and out of. Uh, to do every week, it's, it's badass. Um, keeping up with BT at this point is is difficult. Uh, I won't lie, uh, and I, not like difficult for me as much as it is for for Nick, because he's still shooting the stuff. I mean, Brandon's there helping, but he's still shooting the stuff on his phone. He's still editing it on his laptop. You know what I mean? Uh, and trying to get it up Monday. What's today? Saturday. So, yeah, <laughs> he's got to get that up soon. Um, it's tough, but I think uh, people love it. You know, people react to it. I think more so than man, a lot of things I've done in my career. People react to stuff you do on BT. Um, we have a 
dedicated and loyal fan base. So uh, as long as they're there. So we're good. I guess the follow, my, my question actually was, I'm, I'm glad that we got this cleared up about the couple of issues out here. They're spaced out a little bit more. I would think that as a performer, that allows you a little bit more creative liberty to tell a better story. Is that advantageous to you as opposed to being on a monthly cycle like that? Uh, you know, sometimes less is more, yeah. Uh, we do have a two-hour show once a week on TV. Right. You know, we're, we are limited somewhat in, in how much content we can put out. Uh, and, like, once a month is just too soon. You know what I mean? Like, we... That's eight hours of TV leading up into a pay-per-view every month. Um, I, I think spacing them out, like, have we announced the, the, the next one? No, no, we haven't, okay. So, it, obviously not very soon, uh, but spacing them out a bit, I think, you know, gives time, gives time to let things breathe. You know, you can have some of those bigger matches end up on TV. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that helps there, too. Of all the agents that are working backstage right now, producers, who are the agents that you found yourself working the best with to put together your matches? Uh, oh yeah, um, a lot of a lot of good guys uh, backstage to help out, and guys, stuff like that. Um, Dean, Dean Lico, he's uh, <laughs> one of the funnest people I've ever met. You you might not would guess that he has a very weird, dry sense of humor. Uh, Jerry Lynn's cool as shit too. <laughs> um, yeah, those two. Yeah. <laughs> Since you've been on B and B, we can start with the show. With Dean and I start, you know, I'm not sure. How important do you think it is for like you know showing the nation and social media? There's a different element of like, being your tie trying to post it just a TV show, but it's bringing other elements into it. Honestly, I can't give you the answer. Wrestling's weird. There's no like one thing that works. You just try a bunch of stuff and see what happens. And uh, I feel like BTE was the thing that was uh, just one of those things. You know, Matt and Nick were trying, and man, it, it started clicking, started working. Um, no matter what it is, you know, whether it's it's something like a YouTube thing, whether it's just whatever on social media, which is what you're doing on the show. Um, I think people can really tell when you are putting a lot of time and effort and creativity into it. Whatever, through whatever medium that is. People can see that. You know, I think that's more important than the media. And was there a moment you were going to be in the elite that you knew it was really a great attraction? Was there a second moment or a specific part that was for you? It's just like, okay, things are changing. Um, I mean, it was just yeah, all of it slowly over time. Like for me personally, it was when uh, I got kidnapped by the WWE, and uh, yeah, that, that was tough. But um, <laughs> it was weird. It was something not acknowledged on Ring of Honor television at the time. <laughs> and uh, we're at the show, and people are just where is Tony Brea? You know what I mean? Um, and that's like when things like that are happening that aren't you know, they're not part of the TV show, they're not part of whatever. But people, that's what people know and they talk about. That's when you know, like, oh, this is a little bit bigger than. Just us having fun or something. Can you take us through that suplex near the guardrail? Oh. Your back got pretty uh, dinged up after. I'm not worried about my back as much as my neck. Um, it's like a little stinger. Uh, I kind of like. I, <laughs> it's funny, my parents were watching, they were texting me asking about my thumb. They're like, your thumb broke or whatever? But like, you get a stinger from them, like, you, your hands kind of like, I don't know, they kind of like numb up a little bit and you kind of got to like try to keep them up in and like do this. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think Kenny's probably with the doctor, so I might not bother now. Um, and so yeah, my neck is really <laughs> You mentioned you had a stinger there, a stinger is a concussion, right? What do you use Oh, no, just like, a, I, like, I don't know, like when your neck is kind of, I don't know, jars a little, a little bit or something. A pinch, man. You know, yeah, it's like a pit, like nothing, like my neck's not broken. Uh, but one of those things that does kind of like, you kind of, you got to take each other. Guys, one more question, please. But it sounds like that's not going to keep you out of action on Wednesday. Oh. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. Cool, thanks thank guys, you. appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. <coughs>